When God throws a party, all the wrong people are invited. Listen, says the prophet, everyone who thirsts, come to the water. You that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Ours is a God of invitation and not exclusion. The very holiness of God is poured out for folk just like you and me. Listen, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Grace and peace to you from God and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome home, children of God. Welcome home. Friends, let us pray. God beyond imagination. God beyond image, beyond ego and id. Look upon the world you have entered with compassion even to those who hung you upon that tree. God beyond color, God beyond race, God beyond imagination, root us again in that love that wilt not let us go. Let us wade into those waters and awaken to that place within each of us, yet untouched by pain and doubt. And in your wholeness, help us to see our brokenness so that we might cast off fear and wade right in, putting down our hatred, taking up the mantle of your love. For yours is the voice naming us beloved. That same voice that calls us to account stirs up within us the passion to serve, the presence to forgive, the courage to listen, and the boldness to see the world as you see, to love each other as you love us. In your patient and insistent name, then, we pray. Amen.
Our gospel reading, heard by congregations around the world, isn't a comfortable one. In the parable of the wedding banquet, Jesus means to poke the listener into a deeper awareness. It's a hard word for religiously professional authorities. A fiery parable spoken to a hostile and aggressive audience, and he sets his sights on all those who mistake their own prestige and pedigree for the presence and power of the living God. It's difficult, if not downright impossible, to faithfully read this parable outside of that setting. Yet, as is often the case, the texts meant to challenge the abuse of power can become the very ones misused to persecute the powerless. We bend and mold Scripture to draw lines between the sacred and profane, between the chosen and reprobate, between those who are in and those who are out. And Jesus has a hard word for us when we do. There are still schools of theology who teach that God's politics are like that. And if we aren't careful, this becomes the theology of anti-Semitism, of white supremacy, a theology that says God loves me and not you. This is the theology of the schoolyard bully. Even Martin Luther shied away from preaching this text. As difficult as this parable is, I believe that there is an undercurrent of invitation and grace within it. So let us listen for the redeeming word of God in a world so full of violence. Matthew 22, verses 1 through 14. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding party for his son. He sent his servants to call those invited to the wedding party, but they did not want to come. Again, he sent other servants and said to them, Tell those who have been invited, Look, the meal is all prepared. I have butchered the fatted calf. I have prepared the oxen, and now everything is ready. Come to the wedding party. But they paid no attention and went away, some to their fields and some to their businesses. The rest of them grabbed his servants, abused them, and killed them. The king was angry. He sent his soldiers to destroy those murderers and set their city on fire. Then he said to his servants, The wedding party is prepared, but those who were invited weren't worthy. Therefore, go to the roads in the edge of town and invite everyone you find to the wedding party. Then those servants who went to the roads and gathered everyone they found, both good and evil, and they brought them to the party. And the wedding party was full of guests. Now when the king came and saw the guests, he spotted a man who wasn't wearing wedding clothes. He said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without the wedding clothes? But the man was speechless. The king said to his servants, Tie his hands and feet and throw him out into the farthest darkness. People there will be weeping and grinding their teeth. Many people are invited, but few are chosen. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Playground politics never really go away. Some kids are cool and some are not. Some are in and some are out. Some are fast and some are not so fast. Schoolyard politics grow more subtle, more sophisticated, more violent. And there's always somewhere a game going on and few are being chosen. Sometimes we project playground politics upon God. It certainly happens when we take this parable out of context. God isn't the focus, I think, of the parable at all. I think Jesus is taking aim at bullies, old and young, big and small. Jesus himself was an outcast and a victim of grown-up schoolyard politics. He spends his ministry and pours out his life seeking after the lost sheep, the lost coin, the pearl of great price. God identifies not with bullies, but with victims. And God also understands that even in the heart of the deepest, biggest, worst bully, there is still the image of the divine. When you do to the least of these, Jesus says, you do it unto me. Christ's death was, after all, a crucifixion, a most horrendous example of unrestrained power meant to silence and shame the powerless. This is a parable that reminds us that our own hate can turn us against the God who never turns away from us. The deep good news of the gospel is that God even seeks after the bully. God sees potential in the hardest heart, a measure of God breathed wholeness, waiting to be restored. God is always longing for us, always reaching and searching for us. This parable is a warning that the kingdom of God isn't based upon the love of power, but upon the power of love. And so while Jesus speaks in shocking and blunt terms, he invites us to be clothed with kindness, to put on the mantle of Christ in order to care for all who are in our midst, for servants and kings and sons of kings and those who live on the outskirts of the city. This is a parable that becomes an anthem for the unchosen, all those who are treated like they don't fit in, all those who are unchosen, unloved, unnoticed by the world. Because when God throws a party, all the wrong people are invited. And Jesus pushes us to contemplate the extent of our sin and brokenness so that we might also know that that brokenness and sin does not finally define us. More exactly, it does not define God. This parable is aimed at putting an end to the theology of the bully. Invite everyone you find. We have a troubling tendency to create God in our own image. In the American South, it was a white God for white people, not realizing that when God walked the earth, his skin was brown. But that is the theology of the bully. To paint the worst upon God, to hide the worst of yourself. We have a troubling tendency to create God in our own image. In Germany, the twisted roots of Christianity turned into national socialism, justifying the Holocaust with words of Judaism's own son. That is the theology of the bully, to replace God with the worst of yourself. But God says something different. Invite all that you find. Come to the water. Everyone who thirsts, everyone who doubts, everyone who hurts, come to the waters. You that have no money, come by and eat. You who have no place, come by wine and milk. You who have no hope, no future, no family, come. Without money and without price, come to the waters. The brown-skinned Jewish Jesus was born in an occupied territory, breathing love and forgiveness. The brown-skinned 
Jewish Jesus spoke truth to power, but truth in love, seeing the divine potential in every soul, seeing the divine image in every body, seeing in you and in me more than the sum of our biography or our biology. The brown-skinned Jewish Jesus entered the world with compassion, even for those who hung him on that tree. As we enter into a season again of lockdown, in a season already rife with division, during this time of pain and sorrow and lack of direction, may we see ourselves as God sees us, as those who are seen with compassion, Compassion by the God of the universe, the Savior of our souls, the lover of our lives, the one who invites us in, saying, come to the waters. Amen. Brown Skin God Look upon the world you have entered with compassion, even to those who hung you up on that tree. For healing the sick and being with the despised, for seeing us as your image, mirror of the divine, all daughters and sons, helping them to paint a canvas with their pain rendering their cries into poetry, words heard without need for refrain, as you sink down into the cursed cross, suffocating, you breathe your last. Brown-skinned God, do not abandon us, both those who hung you there and those who took you down to clean your battered and bloody body, treating it as if it were the same, the same flesh and blood, the same fragile skin, that thing that separates you from me, that thing we all share. And friends, we can be bold to pray, to pray with our tears, with our hope, with our hands, with our hearts, to pray for queen and country, for leaders near and far, for doctors and dentists, for lawyers and lawmakers, to pray for you and to pray for me and the neighbor that we never see, asking for patience, for hope, for compassion, for light and love, praying as the brown-skinned Jewish Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so now, friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Return no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering and honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of that same Holy Spirit be and abide with you all now and forevermore. Amen. All around the world there are families who are not as lucky as we are. They don't live in big houses and many have to go without electricity and running water. Christmas time can be hard for them as they often can't afford to buy presents for their children or relatives. 
Jimbolia is one of many towns in Romania where we at Blytheswood Care try to do what we can to help. We've made many great friends there and help where we can with their problems. We've set up after school activities at the Talita Coombe Centre where the local children get to play games and learn and get a nice warm meal. We love to try and give those local families a merrier Christmas by providing presents to those that can't afford it themselves. But to do this, we need your help. We're asking you to help by filling an empty shoebox with useful bits and bobs that they might not have. We're looking for toiletries like soap, toothbrushes and shampoo, stationery like pens, pencils and colouring books, useful household items like candles, tools and kitchen utensils, clothes like scarves and gloves, and toys for girls and boys. Remember, we're providing gifts for the whole family and all age ranges. Once you've filled your shoebox, just deliver it to your local collection point and we'll make sure it makes its way to the people who need it most.